Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Please like subscribe and share to help support the channel. I have been battling Google the past few days as my account was locked. They could not provide any specific reason as to why this occurred, and I had to jump through hoops to verify I was the owner of the account. After three days of not being able to log in other than on my phone, I will spend most of my weekend going through and catching up on over 400 emails. If you emailed me and I have not responded back to you, I do apologize. I will get back to you as soon as possible. With that being said, let's get started, as I have a few good ones for you today, especially the last one, that proves Iraq is heading to a central bank digital currency and a cashless society along with the rest of the world. First article of interest for today. Parliamentary Finance proposes actionable solutions to secure salaries during the next four months. The head of the Parliamentary Finance Committee, Deputy Haytham al Jubari, on Thursday, 30 April 2020, proposed solutions for securing salaries during the next four months, while he indicated that securing them alone without the rest of the operating expenses requires selling the Iraqi barrel of oil at $31, and this matter is not currently possible. Al Jubari said during his hosting of the program, Shortest Roads, Presented by Dr. Nabi Jassaman Al Sharkia News Channel, Iraq may get 25% of the revenues of 2019 and 2020, and we need annually 138 trillion dinars, equivalent to $110 billion to meet all expenses, and we need 97 trillion dinars, equivalent to $81 billion, to secure salaries and pay external debt only. He added, the necessary expenditures in Iraq amount to $72 billion, and they relate to the salaries of employees, social welfare and other expenses, noting that Iraqi oil is currently sold at $16, half of which goes as an extraction cost. Al Jubari revealed, securing the necessary funds for operating expenses in the month of May. He proposed solutions for securing salaries for the next four months explaining that it is possible to take advantage of the state's cash that is available in the Rafidain Bank and the Iraqi Bank for Trade, and we have a deposit of $4 billion to buy weapons from America, we can negotiate and take half of it, as well as it is possible to negotiate with the World Bank to borrow $2.2 billion, and these solutions can solve the problem of salaries for the next four months. He stressed that, insurance of salaries only requires the sale of a barrel of Iraqi oil at $31, and this matter is currently not possible due to the low oil prices. The chairman of the Finance Committee pointed out that, we must sell a barrel of oil at $71 to secure all expenses, noting that, border crossings can provide the budget with $8 billion, but what you get is half a billion because of corruption and illegal outlets. He continued. The reserve from the difficult process in the central is $81 billion, and it remains that $52 billion in all cases to preserve the value of the Iraqi monetary currency. If we use the warehouse, we should not exceed this number. In Lebanon. Next article of interest. Saleh calls for a quick processing of the salary file for Kurdistan employees. Iraqi President Barim Saleh called on Tuesday for a quick processing of the salary file for employees of the Kurdistan region, stressing that the salaries of employees are constitutional rights that should not be compromised due to political differences. This came during his reception at the Peace Palace in Baghdad, a delegation of the Kurdistan regional government, headed by Deputy Prime Minister Quba Talabani. Saleh pointed out, According to a statement issued by the Presidency of the Republic, to Shafiq News, that, the necessity of concerted efforts in order to reach radical solutions to outstanding issues between the region and the federal government based on the Constitution and the law. He added that, the issue of the budget and the livelihood of citizens should not be subject to political considerations, and that solutions come through serious understanding and a common desire to reach solutions based on the national interest. 
with regard to imports and the oil and gas law, the President of the Republic added, it is necessary to reach understandings that lead to a fundamental solution to all issues and to stay away from political differences and personal jurisprudence, stressing that the Constitution is the guarantee to preserve the rights of Iraqis. On the salaries of the Kurdistan region employees, Saleh explained, this sensitive and interrelated issue needs urgent remedies. He also assured the delegation of the region also the necessity of a strict commitment to transparency in order to settle financial issues throughout Iraq and the Kurdistan region, by relying on the budget law that established a mechanism and framework for preserving rights and duties. He continued, saying, the salaries of employees in the region are constitutional rights that should not be violated due to political disputes and conflicts, because they are a right for all citizens in Iraq. And the delegation of the Kurdistan region since Wednesday, meetings with officials of Baghdad and leaders of political forces on reaching an agreement on the differences between the region and Baghdad. Discussions focused on the country's financial budget and salaries of Kurdistan employees that Baghdad decided to stop recently after it said that the region had not fulfilled its financial budget obligations of delivering 250,000 barrels per day of crude oil to the federal government. Next article of interest. Reuters. Trump has threatened Saudi Arabia with withdrawing military support if it does not cut oil supplies. Reuters, news agency said that the United States exerted pressure on Saudi Arabia to reduce oil production, pointing out that U.S. President Donald Trump threatened the Saudis, in the absence of a response, to withdraw military support. Citing four sources. The agency said that Trump called Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman on April 2 and told him that if OPEC countries did not start cutting oil production, he would be unable to stop U.S. lawmakers from passing a law to withdraw U.S. forces from the kingdom. The agency added that this threat to end a 75-year strategic alliance represented a focal point in the American pressure campaign that led to a prominent global deal to reduce oil supplies in conjunction with the collapse of demand for it in light of the spread of coronavirus, and was considered a diplomatic victory for the White House. According to the agency, Trump sent his message to the Crown Prince 10 days before the announcement of production cuts, and the Crown Prince was surprised by the threat that he ordered his aides to leave the room so that he could continue the discussion separately. According to an American source who was informed by senior administration officials who had discussed the discussion, a senior U.S. official told the agency that the administration informed the Saudi leaders that, without production cuts, there would be no way to prevent the U.S. Congress from imposing restrictions that might lead to the withdrawal of U.S. forces. Trump is said in his response to the agency's question whether he had told the Crown Prince that the United States might withdraw its forces from Saudi Arabia, he said, I shouldn't have told him. Next article of interest. IBBC Tech Forum Hold Fintech Video Conference. 29th April, 2020. The Iraq Britain Business Council, IBBC, held a well attended video conference on the subject of the adoption of fintech and online safety and its impact on the Iraqi economy, for members and a wider audience of tech specialists in UK and Iraq. The key speakers included Hugo Russo, Program Manager for Fintech at Tech UK, who spoke on emergent trends in tech and with companies emerging from UK. Yazan Altimimi, CEO Zaincash, Iraq's largest online transactor in telecom, who shared his view of the Iraqi fintech market and the opportunities and challenges within it. Ian Taylor, VP Government Relations in EU for MasterCard, who provided an overview of the importance and relevance of government if bringing forward changes to the tech ecosystem, the regulatory framework and as a key drive for change. Botan Osman, CEO Restrada, the importance of safety and security software and crisis management expertise. The panel provided insights into aspects and impact of fintech for Iraq including the benefits of an online and cashless economy, that development of fintech in London has benefited from being a financial centre and now has over $5 billion FDI alone on fintech. Overall benefits of fintech encompass transparency, efficiency and cost reduction, prevention of fraud and financial inclusion for the 32 million Iraqis who do not have a bank account 
2 billion worldwide. But also the point that a cash economy is expensive and possibly more so than costs of implementing an online economy. The panel discussed the need for government to lead and adopt technological changes that facilitate public uptake, comma, including the mandating of online transactions in various service areas and including e-government for licenses and driving changes with the central bank as well as a clear and positive regulatory framework that is not too restrictive in the first instance, but fosters trust. It was agreed that the public and consumer has a low trust in banking and online banking for historical reasons, and that marketing and online wins need to be communicated to them to encourage adoption, something Zang Cash is doing, to realize its ambition to become Iraq's first digital bank. To this point, MasterCard also added that the cost of online security has to be factored into costs for transactions, but that once it's operating at scale the costs come down. Tech UK also note that new non-traditional players are entering the financial services market such as telecoms, and the giants like Apple, Google, and in Africa. ePesa has been hugely effective in supporting development of the economy and overall efficiency, something that Iraq could rapidly adopt as it has a high penetration of smartphones already. Data sharing, AI and open banking are impacting on the kind of services and shaping the agendas in EU in a positive way for both consumers and businesses. Boat and Osman made the relevant points that online tech and safety during COVID crisis has come to the fore as people are working remotely from home, but still need to remain vigilant on production platforms and safe from hackers, so restaurant to have a platform that enable monitoring of assets and people in their online safety. Given the financial efficiency pressures on oil and gas production, online monitoring and reduction in personnel go hand in hand with their system capabilities, and this is likely replicated across many sectors in Iraq and internationally. He said that, now is the time to make radical changes in government and business to adapt to COVID and low oil prices, and to embrace the opportunity and benefits tech brings. Overall it was agreed that a mindset shift is required among government and populations to embrace the opportunities now. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.